Welcome to this edition of The Forum. I'm your host, Sheila Evans. We have a great show in store for you today with an outstanding lineup of guests. We get our show started today by talking with Tommy Taylor, the Vice President of Community Impact with the United Way of the Cape Fear area. He will tell us about the United Way and how they serve the local community. Then we have Lenore Young. She is a parent of New Hanover County School students and joins us to talk about the education bond that is on the ballot in November. And finally, Kat Steno with Amigos International stops by and tells us about this year's Festino Fe Festival Latino, which is packed with music, food, dance, and lots of family fun. We've got a great edition of the forum for you today, and we'll get started right after this short break. Abandoned and lost. From the dark, cold streets of the city to a cage in the local shelter to heaven, your lap. Have you heard of the Teen Court program? Teen Court is an alternative system of justice where first-time teen offenders are tried by their peers for misdemeanor offenses. Student volunteers from local high schools assume the roles of the court staff, empowering them to take responsibility for problems of crime and violence in their schools and communities. If you know someone who may benefit from Teen Court or would like to become involved, contact the Community Mediation Center on the web or by calling 362-8000. My next guest is Tommy Taylor. He is the Vice President of Community Impact with the United Way of the Cape Fear area. Now, Tommy, the United Way logo is everywhere. You can even see it during NFL games, but do people really know what the United Way does? Tell I'm, us. I'm not sure that people really okay. do, and um, I do hope people know that we don't pay for that NFL messaging. That is a, a pro bono benefit of being a part of oh, United Way okay. Worldwide's network, which we're uh, one of many local small nonprofits. We're a four county organization, a network made up of local companies, volunteers, nonprofit providers, and government agencies that are working to find effective solutions to help families that, that want to regain their independence, get back on track. Um, so we're um, consistently involving our local community here. Uh, we're leveraging money uh, that our donors provide mm -hmm. and working with anybody that can play a role in some of these solutions that take a whole community. What are the four counties? Brunswick, Columbus, New Hanover, okay. and Pender counties. Very good. So we have a local board and it's made up of folks that live in this area. Great. So there's a lot of charities out there. Mm -hmm. Why the United Way? One thing the United Way is uniquely capable of doing is having that neutral perspective where we can um, sit back and look at what are the most critical needs in an unbiased way mm -hmm. and then work to find uh, with volunteers the most effective solutions so we can get the best return on investment and have the greatest impact. So we spend a lot of time, we work in health, education and financial stability and at least 300 volunteer hours go into making that best decision so that we know that we're, we're getting the best investment for a donation. Speaking of your best investment, how much of the money stays locally? Only 1% leaves our area, and that goes um, for the marketing and branding, like you see on NFL, mm -hmm. um, and it goes towards training. Uh, we get all of that money worth in training. Uh, we need to stay innovative and proactive, and we've got to be cutting edge in order to make sure we are making the most effective decisions. So we. Um, we do pay that. We're not a chapter of United Way Worldwide. Um, that's just money to, to be able to share that brand. And um, everything else is invested here. In fact, we're able to draw more money into the area through writing grants and some of the other things we can do. So cool. we're effectively le leveraging every dollar uh, into two dollars. And that doesn't even inc include the ripple effect once it goes into some of our nonprofit partners' hands. Great. Now, speaking of um, United Way Worldwide, there's been some press or whatever um, about the CEO making millions of dollars and people don't want to give because of that. Can you speak to that? I absolutely can. Not a penny donated here locally goes towards his salary. Um, all of it goes towards training for us locally 
and being able to use the brand locally, which would cost us quite a bit more to, to have all of that branding advantage here locally than the 1% that we do give them. Okay. Now I know that donors can um, apply where they want their gift to go. Mm -hmm. What is the best way to give? Giving to the Community Impact Fund is the absolutely most effective way. We can track those uh, results quarterly. Uh, we make sure that they're measurable and we can keep it on track to make sure we're going to get the impact that they wanted. Uh, a donor can decide to, to focus that on education, financial, financial stability, mm -hmm. or health, or all three. One unique thing about the United Way is when you give to Community Impact, it does affect a wide range of community issues, and they're all interconnected. So it's a way to really give to all the causes okay. in health and human services at once and make sure that they're, they're working together for your solution. Very good. How do you all decide who to help? We have, per impact area, mm -hmm. we have three different teams that look at the investment. Okay. So um, first we have vision councils made up of local experts in each area and we figure out what are the biggest priorities, what's not currently being funded, mm -hmm. what are the biggest needs. And then once we get that framework, we involve local donors and we bring them onto investment teams that then weigh and measure all of the impact against other programs that are applying. So we make the, the best investment possible there. That then goes to a planning and investment committee also made up of volunteers that uh, oversees all three impact areas because they have a little bit larger picture. And that then goes to our local board of directors for the final approval. So over 300 <laughs> hours for each impact area wow. are made the, in those decisions. And we make long-term investments, but we track them quarterly. And we make sure we're measuring it so that we're making those incremental changes that are going to lead to the strategic goal of each impact area. Gotcha. Talk to us about how you can use volunteers. We can use volunteers in a lot of different ways. Okay. One, we can help you find nonprofits um, that need volunteers. So we, we know which ones are actually looking for volunteers. So we can help kind of direct you there. Okay. Um, we also use volunteers for our, our board, of course, but also our investment teams and our vision council. So if you're a local expert in health, education, or financial stability, we want your help okay. in determining what the, the priorities are. But also, if you're a local donor, we, we want to involve you in that process. Um, you don't necessarily have to be a donor to be on the investment team, but donors get the right of first refusal okay. because it's, it's their money that's being invested. Gotcha. Um, do you see a vision where high schoolers could help you out if they need to get some community service hours or something? I definitely could see where we would do that. We've actually talked about um, having a sort of high school campaign where they can have an investment team and mm. kind of get a sense of that early on. That's interesting. So it's something we'd be willing to explore for sure. I do believe that, you know, if we get the youth involved in the future, it's, it's going to help us really effectively change um, They're going to own their forward. community a lot Absolutely. Earlier. They're going to be much more effective volunteers as adults. Do you get people coming to you the wanting your help with graduation project? I haven't had a lot of uh, requests for that. Okay. Um, however, I think I think we could work with someone okay. um, if, if that was something they wanted Somebody to Somebody might do. be hearing that now for the spring. That's right. Very good. <laughs> well, Tommy, thanks for coming by and filling us in on what's My going pleasure. on. My pleasure. I love talking about what we do. There you go. I'll be back in a few minutes right after these messages. In 1977 in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already out playing him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships at the age of 14, one in 16 million. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European Pro Golf Tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice, one in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 150. Ernie Else encourages you to learn the signs of autism at autismspeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Who was president? The years 1989 to 1993. As a Navy pilot, he won the Distinguished Flying Cross. During his administration, the Cold War ended. 
he sent troops to invade Iraq. If you guessed George Bush, you're right. He was the 41st president of the United States. This presidential pop quiz has been brought to you by New Hanover County Schools on the Learning Network, Time Warner Cable Channel 5. I am joined by Lenore Young. She's a parent here in New Hanover County Schools, and we're here to have a conversation. First of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you so much for having me this sure. morning. Um, my name is Lenore Young. I've been in the Wilmington community for 21 years. I have two children uh, in the school system. Mm -hmm. I have one in middle school and one at high school. Uh, by my professional career, I'm an engineer. I work at Corning Incorporated. I've been employed there for 21 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're here today to talk about? The bond. Okay. Uh, the New Hanover County Education Bond that will be on the ballot on November 4th um, is very, very important. Um, I decided uh, to actually join the bond committee um, so that I could be advocate for our children as well as our educators uh, for the needs for our, for our students. Okay. Why does New Hanover County Schools need the bond? We need a bond, an education bond, for uh, three ma main reasons. Uh, first and foremost, a bond is uh, about capital funding for building and infrastructure improvements for the school system. So a bond is not about instructional needs. It's not about teachers. And so it's really important that people understand what a bond does and does not do. Uh, but for New Hanover County Schools, we're addressing three issues with mm -hmm. the bond. First and foremost is security and safety for all of our students and educators in the school. We need to make sure that we have security cameras at all of our schools and that all of our doors that lead to the outside have proper secured uh, mechanism, mechanisms mm -hmm. on them. So very, very important. Second, uh, we need to address the overcrowding in our school system. Currently, we have about 3,500 students over capacity, um, and we are slated to grow another 3,000 students by the year 2020. Um, so we have to build a new school, a new elementary school, um, and we need to do some additions and renovations at some of our additional schools. Right. So that's the second reason we need the bond. The third reason is we need to bring our schools up to code with technology improvements as well as infrastructure improvements. So the systems that support our buildings, many of them are obsolete. They have to be brought up to, uh, up to code. And then relative to our technology um, improvements, we need our educators to be able to take advantage of state-of-the-art materials. Right. That requires that we have to have um, faster, high-speed wireless internet, and we need to have that wired in all of our schools um, so that our students are, are able to take advantage of the instructional materials that are available that require that bandwidth. Now, do you know what happens if the bond doesn't pass? If the bond doesn't pass, uh, the county uh, will be required to address some of the most urgent issues around overcrowding. Um, and that may require that we have more mobile units that are placed at some of our uh, schools. Um, but many of our infrastructure needs may not get addressed. Many of our technology uh, improvements may not get addressed. It also may require that as our population continues to grow, that we continue to have uh, redistricting as they have to shuffle our students to be able to balance uh, the load at the different schools. Um, so many, many of the conditions that we currently are living with in our school systems will not be addressed. And with, if the bond passes, um their plan is for one redistricting, is that correct? Uh, they are planning, if the bond passes with the, the addition of the new school and the renovations, there will be a redistricting, one redistricting in the year 2019. Instead of several shifts. Just Absolutely. To keep I mm -hmm. thought one of the most interesting things I heard about the bond was that Hoggard had an electrical problem and it, the capacitor or whatever it is mm -hmm. was so old they had to find it in a building in California that was being torn down. Absolutely. Otherwise the school would have been shut down for a few days. Yes. So many of our high schools when people think of Laney High School when they think of Hoggard High School these are old buildings. Um, we have to remind uh, many of our community members that Ashley High School is the newest high school and by the way that was built with bond money right, um, right. <laughs> several years ago. But yet we have many of our systems that are obsolete. We cannot find parts uh, to replace them um, because some of the analog systems are now digital. And so it is very important that we bring our, our systems up to code. And we talked about the mobile units. Mm -hmm. One another interesting thing that I heard, you can chime in on this, is that um, we can continue to throw those things out there 
but the library, the cafeteria, the gymnasium, they can't take on all the additional things. Absolutely. So students. we currently have 84 mobile units uh, in New Hanover County Schools. And there's a couple of things that uh, really worry me about mobile units. My children actually um, took classes in mobile mm -hmm. units, so I am very I familiar <laughs> <laughs> with um, uh, what happens with the mobile units. Um, some of those mobile units have restrooms, some do not. And especially at the elementary school level, that's an additional security yeah. concern. Yeah. Every time that you have to move students um, in and out of the main building and infrastructure, it is a huge security concern. Also for our students, when we add mobile units uh, to the property, we are taking away from the playground, uh, the area right. where our children are able to run and play, which is very important at the elementary level. Um, at the high school level, uh, we currently have students, they'll have to turn the media center into classrooms, and so we'll end up taking away our library. Our um, gymnasiums right now can, cannot even accommodate the current population um, at Laney and Hoggart High Correct. School, mm -hmm. only 50%. And so um, they cannot have an assembly, if you will, with all of the students at those schools. And one of the things they were talking about with the overcrowded is that lunches could start at like 10 o'clock. Absolutely. As it is, I think they start quite early at they Rolling Grace. Do. And I they think about do. these boys that are athletes. Yes. They're eating breakfast at 10 10 30. Or lunch, 10 rather, at 10 o'clock, 10 30. Yes. They're probably ready for a whole nother lunch by the time it's time to go to practice. They are. I think uh, students and parents are trying to get very creative for those who have these early lunches and in terms of uh, packing snacks and eating them. And so it, it adds, when you have this challenge, you add additional responsibilities and systems that we create to try to compensate uh, for what we really need to do is to get our students and our educators the proper proper facilities. Right. And I had heard some discussion about um, looking into local churches to maximize using those kind of things. But for me personally, I don't know how we put some of those kids there on a permanent basis and these other kids have these wonderful facilities. Absolutely. You all know, means all. All means all. You know, currently Wrightsville Beach Elementary School um, has more students in classrooms outside Correct. of the main building than they do in the building. And they are using the adjacent church for some of their right, classrooms right, right now. Um, and so they will be one of the schools that would benefit from major additions right. so that they can accommodate their students. So how can folks learn more about this? Um, so Folks can go out to the New Hanover County Schools website. Right on the home page there, they'll see bond, big words. They can just click in the middle of that word and it'll take them to a bond website with lots of information. It has details on the specific mm -hmm. projects that will be addressed by the bond. Any concerns, questions, FAQs, all of that information is in there. Also what's on there, which I think is really important from an education standpoint, mm -hmm. it has information about past bonds. Oh, okay. And so it educates the community about what we did with their money in every past bond that we had. And that's really important because we did everything we said we were gonna do with the past money. And so they can feel confident that we're gonna do what we said do with $160 right. million. Dollars. Well, Lenore, thanks for taking time out of your day to Thank come you for and your time share that information. Morning. And we'll be back in a few minutes right after these mm -hmm. messages. All right, guys, we gotta be smarter about what we bite on, okay? I want everyone to go outside. We're gonna run Red Rover on three. What about you, Tony? I'm gonna run around in circles, flap my arms, and make engine noises, like this. When it comes to playing, big kids are the pros. We're eating right, too. We fuel up. To play 60! If your school doesn't have a program, be a leader. Start one. Click today and join, join the movement. movement.
My next guest is Kat Steno. She is the Festival Latino Organizer and she's with Amigos International. Kat, first of all, tell us what Amigos International is. Okay. Inter uh, Amigos International is an outreach nonprofit and okay. we work mostly with the Latino community with anything that they have problems with and also really bringing other people in that want to learn more about the Amigos International and the Latino community. We have internships, we have volunteer, um, if anybody wants to practice their Spanish or just get to know the culture a little oh, bit that's better. A good idea. Um, tell us about the festival. It's got to be the biggest thing on your plate. Yes, that is from our cultural division, and it's our biggest event of the year, mm -hmm. of course. Um, this year is the 16th annual, oh, so we've wow. been running for 16 years, and it has just grown so much. We're so excited. It has um, entertainment, we have live music, dancing, um, different instructions. We have an entire kids' fiesta area. We have food from all different countries, and our exhibitors have expanded so much in that aspect as well. I was going to ask you how it's evolved over the years. Yes, definitely. Um, for 16 years, we've always been mm -hmm. in Wilmington. Um, we grew out of Humacray Parks, and now we're at Ogden Park, which is a great, great problem. A great problem <laughs> to have, absolutely, absolutely. And we're really expanding to all the different areas of the park. Um, we had we probably started with about 20 exhibitors and now we're almost up to a hundred oh, wow. and that's nonprofit small businesses um, we have a bigger stage live music we have Zumba we are incorporating <laughs> a dance competition this year so oh. we're excited about that um, and the kids fiesta area is bigger and better every year talk a little bit more about the kids fiesta area and what they would have to be able to do Absolutely. Um, when I say kids, I mean children of all ages. We oh, have things okay. for the smaller kids. We have kid, uh, teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, we have inflatables. We have festival games. This year we're going to have laser tag for the older kids. Um, we have pinatas every hour on the hour. We have Mexican hat races. We have everything that's going to make the young and old kids feel <laughs> fun. And it's all free. So, Very yeah, good. all free for the kids to, you know, go out, get crazy, wind down, and so they can go home and pass out. There you go. What kind of entertainment do you have that afternoon? Absolutely. We have so much entertainment. Some of it's local, some of it's from um, more around the area, North mm -hmm. Carolina. We have different type of Hispanic music, of course, bachata, salsa, merengue, cumbia. Um, we have live bands coming to promote themselves as well as we have a few Zumba instructors that are really fun and um, for fitness and then we also have a big uh, dance competition happening this year so we'll have judges and so the competition's being... new this year yes oh very good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do people register that day? Or? Yeah, so we'll have a sign-up sheet for anybody who would like to really show off their moves. And, um, you know, it's for amateurs as well as all the way up to really good. <laughs> so you have different yeah. categories. Mm -hmm. They sign in when they get there. Mm -hmm. What time does all that happen, or does it happen throughout the day? It'll be in the afternoon. Okay. We're still working out logistically okay. the timing, but um, it'll be in the afternoon for sure. Okay. We'll have some judges. Yes, Are there we'll prizes? have prizes. We will have prizes okay. to be announced, but okay. um, no problem. yeah, absolutely. Who benefits from the festival? Um, it's a great question. Um, we really want to break the stereotype down that this is a Latino festival only for Latinos, and that's absolutely not true. We really, I mean, it benefits everybody. We have nonprofits sponsoring, you know, their own events and their own mm -hmm. um, organizations. We have non uh, small businesses that promote their products and services. You know, it doesn't matter if they speak Spanish or not. You know, we really try to make an event that is beneficial for everybody. We have everybody from young to old. We have people that enjoy music, enjoy food, enjoy just getting out to the community. It's really about bridging the gap between the community and, you know, doing things that you probably wouldn't normally do or hanging out with people that you might not normally hang out with. Gotcha. What about the food vendors? The food vendors go from every Hispanic heritage. We have Central America, South America, of course we have Mexican, but we just have all different types of Hispanic food. So it's really, it's fun to kind of break that stereotype also because a lot of people think, oh, it's Mexican food, but right. it's, it's every type of Central American food as well. So who doesn't like to eat, right? Right, absolutely. Um, how can people contact you if they want information? 
Um, the best way is to contact the Centro Latino, which is the Amigos International Office, and the phone number is 910-341-0007. Um, we also have our website, www.amigosinternational.org. So we have a lot of contact information. We're always looking for new volunteers. Um, the festival is completely run on volunteers. Oh, wow. So, you know, in the beginning we ran from a few volunteers and now we have hundreds of volunteers. Oh, wow. We have the different universities and colleges and a lot of high school students will come out and help too. So, again, it's for all ages to... And they can earn their beta club and Exactly. We do hours. offer beta points. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. What's your favorite part about it, if you could pick one? Oh my gosh, one part. Um, I just, I love seeing people interacting, honestly. You know, I love, I love the music and the food, of course, it's where my passion is, but I just, I love seeing people interact that wouldn't normally interact. Very good. Now, I don't know that we covered the date. I know it's at Ogden Park. Absolutely. Most important part, probably. Um, it is a two-day event this year. Oh. So we're going for November 8th and 9th. Okay. It's a Saturday and a Sunday. Um, Saturday is going to be the main the main event. So the kids fiesta, music, food, okay. exhibitors, everything on Saturday, and then Sunday basically everything except for the kids fiesta area. So if you have children, come on Saturday, and um, definitely food and music both days. Time frame. Um, usually starts around 11, okay. and then goes until the sun goes down basically. Very good. Very good. Well, Kat, good luck with it this year. Absolutely. Thank Try you. to get out there. All right. Thank you so much. I'll be back in a few minutes right after these messages. What state am I? I have three distinct landscapes. I'm the home of Kitty Hawk, where the Wright brothers launched the age of aviation. My nickname is the Tar Hill State, or the Old North State. Do you know who I am? If you guessed North Carolina, you're right. I received statehood in 1789. This United States Factoid has been brought to you by New Hanover County Schools on the learning network of the Cape Fear. Listen up, energy hogs. Get in there and waste some energy. There's no insulation, boss. It's hog heaven. Mm, time to tan. Keep wasting. They'll never know what hit them. What the? Boss, they're home, and they've got energy-efficient bulbs! Ah! You've got the power to get rid of energy hogs. You can add insulation and lots of other things. Get the tips you need at energyhog.org and play fun games, too. Get the energy hogs out of your home. Hey, wait for me! We hope you've enjoyed our program today. If you would like more information on the United Way of the Cape Fear area or to donate, you can call 798-3911 or visit their website at uwcfa.org. To learn more about the Education Bond and the projects it will fund, visit www.nhcs.net slash bond. And don't forget, Festival Latino will be held on Saturday, November 8th and Sunday the 9th at Ogden Park. Events begin at 11 a.m. each day. For more information, call 341-0007. Now, if you ever have any questions about the topics discussed here on our show today, please call the school system's public relations office at 254-4180. I'm Sheila Evans, and thanks for joining me today.